Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have two different geometric figures. One is a solid ball, the other one is a hollow box. And the box is made of thin, long strips. And so what we're trying to do here is find the moment of inertia of the ball rotating or revolving around a point, an axis that goes right to the side of the ball. And here we want to rotate this about a point right in the middle of that open box made from the long, thin strips. So we're going to do that by using the parallel axis theorem. And the parallel axis theorem tells us that the I of the object is equal to I of the center mass plus the M times D squared, where M is the mass of the object and D is the distance moved from the center mass to the point of rotation. So in the case of this here, if this is the center mass of the solid ball, then this would be the distance d to the point about which it's going to be rotating. So here we can see that in this case d would be equal to the radius of that solid ball. So we're going to start with that one first, that's the easier one, and then we're going to start, then we're going to solve this one here. If you don't use the parallel accent axis theorem on this particular example, and you try to do it by integration, you're going to find that that is very difficult to do, but much easier using the parallel axis theorem. So here, an easier example, we can say then that I is equal to I of the center mass of a solid ball rotating about its center mass, that would be two-fifths mr squared, and we're going to add to that the mass of the ball times the distance squared. The distance would then be equal to the radius, so again we have radius squared. Now we have to add these two together so we find the common denominator. So moment of inertia equals two-fifths mr squared plus five-fifths mr squared. So when you add these together, the moment of inertia equals seven-fifths mr squared. On the second example, notice that the length of each strip is 2r and that the mass of the box is m in such a way that the mass of each side is m divided by 4. Now the way we can solve this is imagine that one of these strips was over here in such a way that it was rotating about the middle or the center mass of the strip. And then we simply take the strip and move it a distance d away from that location and we do that for every one of them so we can go ahead and say that the strip over here was moved from there to there the strip over here was moved from there to there and the strip over here was moved from there to there so we do it four times with each strip so that means that the moment of inertia i is equal to four times the moment of inertia of the center mass plus m times d squared and we do that, that would be the moment of inertia for one of them, we multiply times four because we have four of them. All right, so I is equal to four times the moment of inertia of the center mass, that would be the mass times, well, let's see here, in this case, it would be one-twelfth ml squared, right? So it would be one-twelfth ml squared, and I'm going to put the m as a small m, would be the mass of each of those strips times L squared times 1 12th is the moment of inertia of a strip rotating about its center of mass and then plus M times D squared. In this case, yeah, I'll just write D squared. We'll figure out what D is equal to. So that would be the general approach. So the moment of inertia equals 4 times 1 12th the mass that would be big M over 4 and the length is 2r, so we have 2r quantity squared, plus the mass of each strip, which is m over 4, times the amount that we move it, and the amount that we move would be half the length, that would be r quantity squared. And that would be the total moment of inertia. All we need to do now is simplify what it is equal to. So the moment of inertia is equal to 4 times, notice that 2 squared is 4, this 4 will cancel out that 4, so we end up with 1 12th mr squared. And over here we end up with plus 1 4th uh, mr squared. Then I can multiply everything by 4, so that would mean that i is equal to, that would be 4 12 so 1 3rd 
m r squared plus m r squared. And then of course I can finish over here, which means that i is equal to one third m r squared plus three thirds m r squared. And finally, when I add those together, the moment of inertia of the hollow box is going to be equal to four thirds m r squared. And there you have it. That's the solution for that second part. A little bit more tricky, but if you're very careful about making the right proportions, then you can find it readily by using the parallel axis theorem. And so that is how that's done.